convene into open session. I'd like to report to the call action taken on any items during closed session. So with that, we'll uh, stand for the pledge of you to the blood drive on October 4th, um, whether you want to come and donate a pint or two. The past two weeks in ASB have been pretty busy getting the festivities for the Renaissance Night and Santa Paula Week. Santa Paula Week ran uh, rather smoothly. We had a lot of participation in our uh, events that we have, also the rally. Um, and now we're working on the events for homecoming. Even though it's a month away, we still want to be prepared for when it comes it comes after our uh, October break. And also with our sports roundup, the football team lost to Santa Paula last Friday, or past <laughs> Friday, so we lost our helmet. But it wasn't like we lost a huge game, just our pride. <laughs> <laughs> Cross Country's first league meet is tomorrow, so 
definitely the start of our championship <coughs> season, hopefully. And golf league started last week, I believe. Also volleyball. Um, they had a game today against Pacifica, and their record is three, three and two. So they're looking like they're going to have a good season. And that's all I have for you guys. Yeah. Um, we've been meeting with the teachers union and uh, working on some MOU agreements and I think we're very close to being able to add some supports out of the site so just working on the details with those but that's exciting. <coughs> um, I'm hoping a little bit on, on budget before Dio has a chance to really talk a little bit about it. You know, this is a very unusual year to change the work funding for us in California. 40 years we have not had that change. And they're changing the way they give us money. The problem with it is we don't know how much we're going to pay because it's predicated upon if you have students who are low social economic or kids of the L uh, population. So we're trying to figure out what that looks like. Also, it's an eight year process before you get all the funds. So don't they tell you you're going to get so much, it's like 12% a year until they finally do it all. We don't know what that looks like. They haven't decided what it looks like yet. There's going to be an accountability piece making sure that the money does follow the kid that it was entitled to follow. So if you're a low SU social economic student or you're a DL student, then the money should follow you. You should get additional resources. And um, the problem with some of this the formula is that on top of that is a tax. All your parents, your students, and your parents are paying a tax called Prop 30. That money does come to the state of California for education. It's a five-year tax, which means after five years, it goes away, unless the voters reapprove it on that. We're not sure if that happens, so we have to be very careful not spending your current money one-time dollars. Five years is basically one-time dollars. You're finding out when you become moms and dads, kids. When you find out there's only so much money, if you, if you don't have a job, or you don't need money, you can't pay your bills, and then you lose that. So we're a little concerned about that. Uh, we're concerned about some of the debt we have encountered. We had an issue with our roofs, so with the middle school especially, for the last 12 years. And so we actually spent general fund money to repair the roofs because the state took away the maintenance and repair the money that we used to. So that was about $1.7 million that we obligated the district to pay for that roof. And so and we have a lot of other needs in this district, including air conditioning and other roofs that leak, and windows that don't hold, the heat and the cold, and as well. So there's a lot of needs we have, but that's an obligation that we have to pay off. So all those things are called debt. Those are debt. When you spend something, it's a debt. When you pay it off and you pay that obligation off, you don't have a debt anymore. But it takes a revenue. The revenue is money coming in in order to meet those payments. And you'll find that out as you get over and hopefully your parents trade the amount that gets a big pain. So I'm going to let Dio talk a little bit about uh, the state predicament, what they're trying to do. And uh, it's a huge change. I say that every meeting. This is the most drastic change in education we've had in 40 years. Not only are we funding differently, we're going to be testing it. It's all going to be computer generated. And that's where we have to get enough computers in our classrooms, enough technology to make sure our kids can take the test. The third piece is that um, the curriculum is called Common Core. We're talking about that. We're talking about not how two and two is four, but why do you think two and two is four? What does it take to make that? So they want you to be thinking about things. It's be a little bit different than, uh, than it was before. All those three things in education makes it very, uh, not difficult, but precarious and uh, challenging for us to make sure our kids learn everything they need to learn uh, in this changing technological world. Two years of give us to implement this stuff. Two years, two, that's what it's for, two years. Three different major changes in the way we do business. And our teachers are trying to gear up for it, our principals are trying to gear up for it, we're trying to gear up for it. It's a very challenging time for all of you. So we hope that you're patient and that you uh, also do your part in study hard students you know, so that you can make challenges. It's difficult out in that world if you don't have a good education. 
not only about a piece of paper, but do you have knowledge to make the right choices? Do you have the knowledge to make the right choices? Everything on the internet isn't always true, is it? Is everything on the internet going to be true? No. And that's what they're trying to say. Don't just take things for granted. Think about what it is they're trying to explain to you, or persuade you, and then make a good decision on the knowledge that you need. Do you have anything about money I forgot? I think you've got most of it. Um, uh, I think we board members are not going to My, this is my, my second board meeting and my first one uh, talking about what's going to happen with uh, what is known as the local control funding formula in, um, in our board meeting on August 27th what we sunshine there was basically a projection of what we are estimating here to get here in the district based on our student population um, and within the different grade structure. What I uh, intend to do in the future with um, in terms of how we deal with budget issues is to ensure that, that our stakeholders have, uh, we ensure transparency in all of the things that we do with respect to the budget. So I think you'll see that uh, as, a, as an item. Um, more of a simple way of trying to describe what the budget is in terms of non-technical approach so that uh, all of our stakeholders understand what that is and uh, how we are going to implement the local control funding formula over the next couple of years. There is always a temptation to say, well, um, you said we were going to have about uh, 1.8 or $2 million in new monies, and if I take the value of 1%, well, which I know, I divide that by um, what that dollar figure is, then we are entitled to X amount of, uh, uh, of an increase in salary. Uh, what we are looking for is to take a balanced approach as we go through the next, probably the next year, which is critical, because we are in a transition year of LCFF. And uh, what you'll see is uh, as we approach all of the different decisions that we have to make, we're going to be doing that in a structured, balanced way that uh, gives um, validity to uh, considerations in uh, for our certificated staff, our classified staff, addressing issues with the general fund itself and our long-term debt. So um, it will be something that you will see our approach to try to take care of all of these issues in an incremental way. So um, I look forward to presenting that. Uh, probably uh, at first interim we'll have a better picture as we go through uh, and more of the um, local control funding formula unfolds at the county level the state and county level and here at our local level as well. Okay, Michael. Uh, in my report, Dr. Nishin was asked me to respond to the issue that has been brought up regarding students, high school level or 12th graders, and our deficient in credits. So I would like to address that in my report, Dr. Nishin, which you've asked me to do so. I must confess I am beyond concern for these students who have yet to meet the graduation requirements. Honestly, I live in it. In fact, more appropriately, outrage. That this has happened to these students is unconscionable, as they could have been avoided. To address why I believe this to be so, I would like to cover the following points. Number one, I would like to set my report in context. Number two, I would like to give the rationale as to why we have moved towards a high standard and high expectation. Thirdly, I'd like to identify the depth of the issue as I have been addressing it. Then finally, I would like to move to the solution to the issue. Let me talk about the context, the, the setting in which I'm giving you my report. I'd like to make it very clear that this is not applied to all of the students at the high school level. I'm just focusing on some of the students, and no doubt, as I look at the stand, scan the audience, some of these students are here. Also, I would like to say that for some of these students, they probably come from households where perhaps parents do not speak English fluently or parents who have two or three jobs and therefore these are parents who will 
perhaps not attempt to darken the portals of our high school. They pretty much trusted us to do what is right by their students, by their child. So those are the students I'm afraid to. <coughs> Secondly, in this report, I would like it very clear that I'm not at all implying that the adults involved in what I'm going to say do not care. In fact, they do. But there are two kinds of caring. An adult can care and have high expectations for a student, in which case an adult would say, you know, I'd like you to take this challenging course because you're capable of doing it. Or an adult can care and say something like, you know, I really don't want you to take that particular course because I don't want to set you up for failure, which sometimes is a code word to say, I don't really have high expectations of you. So, the point is, I'm not saying adults don't care. So that's the context in which I would like my presentation to be understood. So let me talk about the rationale for raising the standards and expectations. I'd like it very clear that we have no choice. We have no choice. The Common Core State Standard sets in each purpose and its mission that every graduating senior has to be ready for college and a career. It didn't say or. It says college and career. That is the goal. That is the standard that has been set by the state, which the state approved 2012. That's the curriculum that we have. Based on that, we made adjustments to the curriculum of the high school. Now, I would like it understood also that the state of California stated that it's not a choice. Because it used to be a choice. You know, we would think, oh, some kids are going to college and some kids are going to go to a trade school. And therefore, the pathways are different. They made it very clear that that pathway is no longer there. They're implying that all of our students ought to be prepared for college. All of them. That's a state. And 40 states in our United States have adopted the same standard. So wherever you go, that is the standard. And this is the reason why we needed to shift our high school curriculum and expectations for all students, not only for those who have been traditionally identified as college family. Now, what does this mean? In case... This is not clear to some parents here tonight. Unless your child becomes successful in Algebra 2, they have been eliminated from taking and applying to a four-year university. I want to repeat that. Unless your child has been successful in Algebra 2, you've actually eliminated that child's opportunity to apply to a four-year university. Now, you can go to a community college, but that's a rule of that. I'm just saying that. So what does that mean for us as adults in the system? What that simply means is that I have a responsibility to make sure that all of you, all of you, have the best opportunities ahead of you. That we prepare you for what the state says you ought to be prepared for. Unless we do that, we are falling short of our responsibility. Now, whether you go to college or not, that's your choice. Whether you take advantage of that or not, that's your choice. But my responsibility is not to restrict your opportunity in the future. So that when you are handed that diploma, you are ready to make the choices that would be right for you. Not because I've restricted it, but because you made that choice what is best for you. The second point, which leads me second point leads me to the third point. That's the depth of the issue. I did not know when I started addressing this back in the spring, because that's what's brought up in the spring. I did not know how pervasive and how deep this issue was. In fact, we addressed it during the summer. We offered courses that we never offered in this district to allow students who are not being successful in math to take those courses. 
and for the most part, a number of them made it through. Reducing the responsibility they had to take in the fall. The argument continued that these kids, that these kids still lack, you know, what needs to happen. So I kept digging, digging and digging. And I realized that there were some areas that I suspected, because of the research I've done, uh, was happening. Let me mention three of those. The high school has a high graduation rate, very high graduation rate. However, it is program improvement. Something does not connect. If you have a high graduation rate, it means that you should have some students, or most of you students, who are scoring high in the CSTs. But that's not the case. So as I look at it, I'm wondering, why is that the case? It appears to me that the goal at the high school has been to graduate kids, at least some of them, and give them whatever courses are necessary, whether they are quality or not, as long as they get a piece of paper, a diploma. That seems to be what I'm noticing. Secondly, I also noticed, especially this came up, the first year I was here, and the superintendent gave me charge to say, Michael, take a look at the continuation high school. Because the continuation high school principal was very vocal. She was saying, you know, continuation high school is being used as a dumping ground. There's no criteria, there's no process, and so I addressed it. And what has happened due to that is that it plugged that hole so that only students who really can benefit from the continuing high school were being transferred there. So there's a system now, and there's a process. Thirdly, and this to me is probably a little bit more serious, and this to me gave me the direction that I ought to go. Since the summer up to this point, I have looked at over 30 transcripts, 30 transcripts. My background is high school counselor, by the way. That's where I came through the ranks. 30 transcripts. And I can say this without going through details. Some of those transcripts did not make sense to me. It didn't make sense to me. I came across one transcript that didn't offer English 9 in the ninth grade. That's unexplainable. You can't even defend that. So what I'm saying is this, that as I look at it, look at the transcripts, study them, a number of the issues that the students are facing now started back in the ninth grade. It didn't only happen here. And if some of you are doubling up on math or tripling up on math, okay, that's an issue. That shouldn't happen. Ideally speaking, it shouldn't happen. Why? Because no matter if you raise the standard or not, you still have to meet three years of math. What's happening that it's only now that you have to catch up on math? I'd be very interested in looking at your transcript. What happened? What's the history of your transcript? Okay. And again, these are probably parents who wouldn't come. Unlike a college-bound kid, a parent who's educated would come and say, I'd like to know what my kid is being, why my child is being scheduled in this particular class. So that's my suspicion as I look at that, as I look at the student's academic history. Now, let me say where we are with this. And, and I think I shared it already. What I'm recommending is certainly against every fiber of my body. Because there's been a history of giving students courses that lead to nowhere. They get a piece of paper. That piece of paper is something that does not prepare them for college, nor does it prepare them for life. We get them out. They get a piece of paper. So realizing the depth of the issue, realize how expansive and extensive it is, okay? we've started working with the high school principal to provide courses, I have to say this, lead to nowhere. 
to give you a piece of paper. I'm sorry, that's where we are. And I'm sorry to say also that there are some students, because they're so behind in credit, who probably struggle in making it through. The point, however, that needs to happen here is this. As we make those changes, you have a responsibility to put in every effort in order to pass. More than ever before in this district, there has been more options for students to graduate. We brought in online, there are courses that the principal is offering, tutoring before school, after school. You've got courses in the evening, taught by a couple of the teachers. There are more options for you than you've ever had in the past. You have a responsibility to take that upon yourself, to do everything you can. So you're the only one who can determine whether you're going to make it. Let me end with this, and then I'm going to ask the high school principal to tell you what we have done to deal with this issue. I'm going to read this article to you. This came out of the Star, Friday, July, 20, July 5th, 2013. And this is a real story of a graduate from Fillmore High School. Her name is Angelica Amescua. Angelica Amescua had told the story many times, but her message was so compelling that she was involved, she was invited to Washington, D.C. to speak to the local initiatives support corporation this month. That was back in July. Amescua was one of three students chosen to attend the conference. The nonprofit that deals with rural areas, rural areas. People like her, people like her story. She came from living in one room and having to study. The family had to allow for that. If the student, if the studious young Angelica, Angelica Amescua wanted to complete her studies at night, when her farm worker parents were sleeping, her family had to be accommodating. She's quoted, my parents and siblings were very understanding and would not mind sleeping with the lights on, she said. Amescua said the family came to the U.S. looking for a better life when she was 11 and that the only places that could find to she could find, they could find to live were in the homes with only one room for the entire family. And then she says this, my family's looking for a place to live, come to the United States for better opportunities. Many told in high school, oops, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm cutting this off. Attend the conference. Each speaker came from housing in one of the community development corporation across the United States. We wanted a story about how people are being benefited by the program, said Michael Dustra, a program assistant with a division of the nonprofit that deals with rural, rural areas. And then I continue picking up, I read it already. People like her story, she came from living in one room and having to study. The family had to allow for that. If the studious young, et cetera, et cetera. And then Amesco said the family came to the US looking for a better life when she was 11 and that the only places they could find to live were in homes with only one room for the entire family. Many families looking for a place to live come to the United States for better opportunities. Many farm workers can't do anything but share a room in someone, someone's home, house. But once they have a decent home, they can excel. Cabrillo Development gave us the potential we have, she said. A graduate student in Chicano Studies at CSU, Northridge, Amescua, was told in high school by a counselor that she wasn't college material because of her limited English. I wish I could say this is the only story I've heard this way. I've heard others. And I've asked them to come to the board, but they would not. It's a low expectation, low expectation of some of our students. She said the negative, as the negative assessment motivated her to work harder. I look at it as a blessing to have the opportunities I've had. It started with my parents, who had an appreciation of education, Amescua said. 
After the discouragement of the counselor, it was really important to be able to go to CSUN. The college has an office for first-generation students from low-income families. Her first summer with them opened doors of opportunities, she said. It's hard. It's hard <coughs> when you hear stories like this. And I wish I could say it's an exception. It is not. It is not. And let me tell you, one student, one student should not have to go through something like this. We have been entrusted to do the best for our kids. And I'm sorry, we have failed her. We have failed this lady. And that's what we are trying to do. So yes, we'll give you the courses that you, you need to graduate. But I wish that piece of paper will mean something. And I'm afraid this is not the only generation of students that will have to experience this. We probably will need two or three more years of giving courses just to get kids through. That's not right. That is not right. Mr. Rousseau, could you please mention to them what we have done to celebrate? Good evening, everybody. And um, I have to say that uh, I really appreciate the fact that all of you are here. Um, what it says to me is that you care about your future. You're concerned about your future. I've been talking with you individually on a group basis. You have made some passionate pleas saying that we need some help. And we really, really appreciate that. And the conversations have been very honest. And I really appreciate the fact that you're interested in your future. That is inspiring and powerful. Every day, I have met quite a few people, especially in the last few days. The conversations have been very painful. Some of the things that I have heard from students is that I can't do it. I can't do it. Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at the principal who's been told he can't do it. You're looking at a superintendent who's been told he cannot do it. We have all statements in this room who were told, you cannot do it. I hated my French teacher because he hated, he came, he was from France, he came to Africa to teach a class. I take a look at him, he didn't look like he liked black kids. And then I refused to speak French. And I speak English, I speak Arabic, I speak Ethiopian, I speak Eritrean, I'm learning Spanish. I don't want to speak a word of French because one teacher did not seem like he was inspiring to me. Please do not listen to people who tell you that you're not capable. Because this morning, I met with kids. And I said, well, so we have this plan for you. Do you want to go there? And they said, no, I'm actually doing a good job in algebra too. I don't want to be moved. These kids did not know something about themselves. They found out that they're more capable than they were told. They were told they were no good before. They found out that they are really better than they've been told. They've been told you can't do it. What's happening to these poor kids? What's happening to you poor kids? This patronizing, this condescending culture of low expectations. Yes, we came in and we said these kids deserve better. Yes, we came in and we found people who could be mentored with a C grade. I came in and there's a mentor with a C grade. How do you get to be a mentor and you have a C grade? You should be mentored. You need a mentor. How to improve that grade? I have never seen a situation where you are a C student and how are, then I should bring in teachers who are the lousiest teachers so they could mentor the teachers. Let's bring the lousiest people to champion these great teachers. What could my teachers benefit from a lousy C type of a teacher? I want the best and brightest to mentor my students. I want the best and brightest to mentor my teachers. 
I don't want to. I don't want to look up to somebody who's a C. I want to be led by people who are the best in their profession, and I wouldn't do that to you. I want the best and brightest to mentor you. C students should be in the classroom getting mentored, and then there's this idea of well, if you're a C student, you should be free to go get some lunch. What lunch? Your priority is not to get lunch, my friend. You're a senior. You should be concerned about your future. You should be hustling for some tutorial class available and open for you. Ask any teacher. Their doors are open. They have three kids, four kids. If I'm so motivated, I'll be there in that classroom. Lunch, I will eat it with the teacher. I have a priority. I had a conversation with a student. And he goes, I was having so much, I was looking forward so much to being a senior and having all the fun. I said, are you serious? Your priority is to have fun as a senior? Are you serious? Well, I'm sorry, I'm not the fun department. I'm trying to prepare you for reality, man. I'm preparing you for reality, staring me and staring you. I'm sorry, I, this is not the fun department. This is the wrong place. That conversation took place in my office. What I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, is I know who you are. You are much, much more capable than people are telling you. You are hugely, hugely capable. You're here tonight. You're here together. You're saying, I need some help. I hear you. We've actually made some decisions because we want to respond to you. Mr. Johnson made some powerful, powerful statements saying that this is not just limited to now. It goes way back. But we cannot say, well, that's not my problem. We're actually addressing it. We actually spent, you know how late we talked last night? 11 p.m., 11 p.m., 11 p.m. Every night, reflecting, figuring out ways to support you because we care. If we did not care, we would not care. We would not have these kind of conversations. You know how many evenings or how many days or how many sessions I have with you guys individually. One student at a time. Some kid, actually a student, actually stood me up because I had this very painful conversation and I said to him, could you please come to my office? I want to help you out. So I wait for the student to show up. The student doesn't show up. So the next day I said for him, I said, how am I supposed to help you? Here's the principal of the school. I have a thousand kids to serve, but you don't even show up. You're a senior. You have things to do. You've got to be reaching out to me. I'm available. So we talk because I pulled him out from the classroom. He stood me up. I told him, you stood me up. I have a thousand kids to serve. I have ninth graders aching to transition to high school. Ladies and gentlemen, we will help you out. We will overcome this situation. I happen to know you individually. I happen to like you. I happen actually to believe in you. I am so proud of the students who told me today, I do not want to leave Algebra 2 because I know now that I'm capable of being successful in that classroom. You did not even know that about you. You did not know that. Now you know. So please do not allow people with jobs who have gone places to let you know because somehow you're not capable of it. You are hugely, otherwise I would not be a principal. I would not be speaking English. I would not be applying to all these jobs. I'm from Africa. I'm here because I worked my tail off despite the fact that everybody told me you're going nowhere. Everybody. I can tell you members of my family who told me what's the matter with me? Why do you have to speak English all the time? Who do you think you are? English is serving me very well right now because I'm speaking in a language in another country because I spoke English. When you learn, good things happen to you. I had also teachers who had high expectations of me. I had a principal who had high expectations of me. And that's why I'm standing in front of you. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe in you. What we have done, Mr. Johnson and I, at the direction of the superintendent is that we have decided to avail a business math. <coughs> this period would be offered period one. This class would be offered period one. Some students have actually applied to be members of this classroom. We're also availing seven to eight math. We're also availing three to four math to support you. Lunch, we will avail it. Here is the place for you, please, ladies and gentlemen. You are very capable. You, I know who you are. I know what you do on weekends. I know what kind of jobs you do. I know who you are. 
I know you individually. You are good, wonderful, hardworking kids. It's just that do not internalize what people are telling you that somehow you're not good enough. You are better. No, you should not ever, ever believe them because you are much better than that, than what they're telling you. Do not believe these naysayers because it might be actually tinged with a cultural low expectation. They should be, they should be asking themselves why they seem to believe that about certain kinds of kids. They should ask themselves before they go to bed. They should ask themselves if they would send their own children to the same school they subject our children to. They should ask, would you send your child to the same school? If you do not, then that classroom is not good enough for anybody. If it's not good for your own child. How many people used to go to Fillmore High School? Where are they? How many people do we lose every year? Every year? What? Where do they go? Where do they go? What happens to these people? Does anybody even call them back? What can we do? If you're a restaurant, if you're a business, and you're losing customers? So, we will be working with you. I just want you to know that. We are very available to help you out. We got your back. You will be graduating. The more you graduate, the better it is for Fillmore High School. We got your back. One student at a time, we will talk to you. We will take care of you. We will tutor you. We will do whatever it is to walk you through because that's what we're all about. We're all about high, all the way from that superintendent to this assistant superintendent to this board. We're all about supporting you, one student at a time. Please do not lose hope because we're here to serve you. I'm very proud of you that you're here to say I care about my education. I'm very, this is your democratic first amendment right. So I don't want you to ever think that somehow I'm disappointed. No, I'm actually very proud that you're here because you care. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to conclude. And let me just conclude, and this time I'm going to address the parents in conclusion. We are where we are with your child. I have yet to meet a parent who did not want something better for their child. No matter where they are, whether they are a doctor, a lawyer, or somebody who's a poor woman, they always want something better for their child. We are where we are with your child right now. If you have younger children, you have younger children going through the system, please, please, do what you can. There's help available for you. You're my grandparent. There's a migrant office where you can talk to them to keep track of where your child is. Do not wait until they're in the 12th grade to visit the counseling office. Ask, are those appropriate classes for my child? They are more than willing to help you to do that. So, Dr. Nishina, I am Marie. Dr. Nishina, yes. I'd like to say something. Uh, first of all, how come, um, are there parents, I see a lot of students, are there parents here that are just Spanish speaking only? Yes. Are there any yes. Spanish speakers? Yes. Yes. May, may I have a show of hands? Oh, how many no, Spanish speakers are there? Can you say that in Spanish? Yes. Yes. Levanten la mano, por favor. Si preferían que, que se, se comunicaran aquí en español y entendieran mejor en el, en el español. So, basically, I'm, I'm, what I'm going to say is really short. But basically, I see a lot of students in this, in this room, and I know that this matter is a great concern to you. But I was here 43 years ago. And I, and I went to Fillmore, and I never had biology, and I never had algebra. I had math nine. And this is how it affected me. Going, mm. There were quite a few, there were quite a few students that I went to school with, and we were, we didn't need to take those classes. 
because we would never go to college. Dice la 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 señora de la tienda que cuando ella está viendo la escuela uh, no tomó muchas clases porque no eran uh, requeridos para tomar las clases y, y también personas le dijeron que ella nunca iba a ir al colegio y eso le afectó en su vida. So what I'm saying is that um, I wish, I wish I would have had educators that were as passionate as what they're saying that would have said, we'll help you. Don't let somebody tell you that. No, you do need the classes. And whether you go to college or not, that will always serve you. It will serve you. It's just something that, for me, that it's something that you, to have the exposure to that does not hurt. It's raising the bar. I'm so tired for, for this district to just, you know, to take classes to be able to graduate. You want to learn, you want to go higher, you want to do the best you can. Not all of you will go to college, but then again, a lot of you will not go to college right away, but a lot of you will decide that later on you do want to go, and that will serve you. This will only serve you and help you. Dice que, que ella le, le gustaría pues, tener una persona, administradores, que la, la apoyaran y que le, le, le unieran retos enfrente para llegar a otro nivel más alto académico, para el, un día de mañana ir a, a la, al colegio, a la universidad, para continuar con sus estudios. Y que los administradores aquí valorizan la educación y que por eso eh, el intento era elevar el nivel uh, académico. We're just very, trying very hard to raise the standards for these students. And um, it's, uh, I was so happy to hear what you said, that there's some students there saying, hey, I can do this, and they're deciding to stay. You know, I give them props 100%. And there was a, a comment made last, at the last board meeting, where they said, we, um, we have failed these kids by not preparing them, and therefore we should let them take these classes so they can graduate. That statement for me was profound, to say that we have not prepared you. And that should have happened a long time ago, not just in high school. That should have been happening all along. And like I said, it, it, it affected me. It, it, it's funny, because in talking to girlfriends that went to school with me, acquaintances that went to school that had the same thing happen to them, it's. It may not affect you so much now, but it, down the road, it, it will. It does. It hurts. But because you, one thing like that just changes the course of your entire life. It just really changes your course. And it, uh, anyway, I'm done with that. But I hope most of you will try at least make the effort to do that. And uh, I'm done. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Dice la señora que, uh, que el intento de la mesa y de los administradores era de elevar el nivel de académico, pero que en, en varias comunicaciones e intercambios con diferentes personas, ella escuchaba que esta mesa, los administradores, uh, les falló a los alumnos, a los estudiantes, y que la preparación de muchas de estas clases no no falló en este momento, pero ha fallado atrás, a través de los años. Y que uh, la expectativa de elevar el nivel académico era para que las personas tuvieran opciones para continuar con su educación. Y eso fue el intento uh, de cierta uh, expectativa del distrito. And I think I will say just a little bit more. Just, just, just so you know a little bit of my background so that they can understand too. My father was a farm worker. He came over in the Facero program. He didn't speak a word of English. I didn't speak English with as I went into kinder. Um, so I, I know for some of you, not all of you have that experience, but I know, I know where you've been. But I do know that your parents, or at least I've got to believe that this is what they want. My father always used to say, you know, education is what's going to get you success and it's going to bring you ahead. He only went through the third grade, worked hard all his life, 
He wanted it for me. He didn't really know how to get it for me. He depended on the school to bring me through. And unfortunately, now looking back, when you see that, you think, you know, it, it was. That failed me back then. So, or at least I feel that way. El énfasis de eso el tiempo fue la educación. Que, uh, la señora dice que, que el sistema le falló a ella y ya no quiere que les falle uh, a ustedes. When I came in with TSL, they call it a hole. They call it an oil. Right here in the bottom, they call it a hole. When I was going to school, yeah. the oil in Spanish. No, just nothing but Latino in there. It's just got to change. And then to see this, to have read that 40 years later and see that that happened again, yeah. that was horrible. It was horrible to read that. Well, I, I, like, I like to get up, man, when you guys are done. Did you say in the article that that girl is a graduate student at Cal State Northridge? Yes. So it didn't stop her. No, the the comment was her. made, oh, but she oh, propelled forward. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
to then spend additional hours rewriting our curriculum into a lesson plan format. What is the limit to our professional day? While Mountain Vista teachers move forward with implementing Common Core this year and continue to prepare our students for their future, there is an urgent need for curriculum support and training for the Mountain Vista staff now. After all, the future sits before us every day. Respectfully, Mountain Vista teachers. tells me or tells everybody in class I was in there, she has a reputation not having, um, you know, whatever, I don't know, but I talked to Caroline and she says, oh yeah, this girl failed. Oh, this girl, this guy failed. Oh, this kid failed. Yeah, this, this girl's not doing it. Oh, she's in, in soccer right now. Uh, you know, ASYO <coughs> and uh, the, the uh, soccer coach, um, Homer, uh, Martina. Martina, Martina, Martina. Martina. Yeah. She wants to see the grades for all the girls. Well, this year, I don't know what happened, but now she has a F in algebra two. You know why? Because the first two weeks she was in geometry class. And because she passed geometry class in summer, she had to wait till she, she got into algebra two. So what two weeks went by, sitting in geometry class, and I went, Talk to a young lady, a uh, counselor, at the UCLA, I don't know what's her name. Anyway, I said, hey, can you get Caroline into the algebra too? Oh yeah, we can do it right away. Well, why wasn't it done two weeks earlier? Right now, two weeks, sorry. So what I'm trying to say here is that, it's kind of, I don't know, I went, I went through the same thing as Virginia did, here in, in, in Sesame School. And uh, I thought I was prepared when I was to Kelsey Northridge two years trying to 
try to be a phys ed teacher, you know, and that was good anatomy. Oh my god, anatomy. Ooh. Really hard. Really hard class, but watching those dead people. But anyways, uh, anyways, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that you guys can, you can, can talk to Ms. Byrne and say, you know, can I use that notes, you know? No saying I'll do everything. She says that all she does is notes, you know? Can she, can't Ms. Burns talk to the kids? Can't they say, okay, you know, um, you know, Ms. Burns go to the counselor and say, hey, this kid is, isn't doing too good. Just give them some, you know, if they can't, if they can't come, if they can't come back for themselves, let's get them, let's get the, uh, uh, tell the teacher, hey, uh, you know, this, uh, go to the counselor, this, this student's not doing very well, let's get him some help. Instead of, because my daughter, she was just, she was waiting for somebody to get some help, you know. She, I don't know why, you know, she seems like she's, uh, you know, you know, I don't know, she looks like she, she could talk all day long, you know. But I don't know why she didn't want to come to me or come to somebody besides us, you know, because I tell her, what's going on? Hey, what's going on? Come on. I did go to school, you know, two or three times, but I don't, I don't know why it was happening. But Ms. you guys got to talk to Ms. Burns. That's all I ask. You guys got to talk to her, okay? Please. There's a lot of kids that are failing that test. And once they get to the other two, I don't think they know what's going on. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. And thanks for your Hi, everyone. I'm Jessica Almanza. I went to high school here, graduated class of 07, and right after I went to UC Davis, where I got my BS in civil engineering. And, um, you know, I was encouraged by my, my counselor was Ms. Karen Ashton, and I was encouraged to take uh, harder classes and uh, just to challenge myself. So um, I feel that, you know, these kids that are saying, like, I don't want to, or Algebra 2 shouldn't be a requirement set, like, right now where I'm about to graduate. I feel that if you're going to implement that, to start off with, okay, hey, let's start with the freshmen, because these students, already went through this broken system and they're being forced to um, to to do this requirement and it's not um, I, I feel like it's not fair I mean oh, granted I'm pretty sure a lot of these kids are capable of doing it but they've already gone through this broken system and I feel that that is totally not fair for them class ring. All the parents, I'm pretty sure all the parents read over all the kids' rings, paper pictures. You guys have to think about that. The economy's struggling, but yet we're still sitting here trying to give our kids the best thing and makes them happy. I graduated in 01. My daughter's a senior. Yep. Two little ones. I worked my butt off to raise my family. Yeah, I know you guys want the kids there, but my daughter, she spent her whole summer going to college at Trent College. She missed one day. She was there. We came from a we joke. Every morning she missed her. We waited, we went to the beach, my kids to the beach, we took shut us home. Came back home every day we took, so she was on the college class. So there it helps her out, you know. She has to understand Christian dreams. They should have brought this up last year, so that way they look forward when they're coming to see her this year, they're like, hey, we know it's gonna go on, and you know. You have to think about it. Okay. I don't think mm -hmm. it's right. A lot of parents, spend, I'm pretty sure a lot of parents are wasting a lot of money for their, for their dresses, their yearbooks, their class meetings. Pictures. You guys have to think about that. A lot of people are struggling. A lot of, a lot of single parents are struggling, but they want to give the best for their kids. So you know, if you guys really think about it, I'm only 30 years old. My daughter's 17. My daughter's six. My son's gonna be five. But my kids come first, and I understand education's good for them. You I mean, gotta cut these kids a break this year. I think you guys should. I'll be able to do them. Thank you.
and our optics should stay the same just because they were the same artificial medium. And that's how it should be thought of. We don't have any options. And um, honestly, me and myself, I've been thinking about going to sign up for high school. I just, um, it's coming to an option to me. And I also talk to students, some close friends of mine, they don't want to go to school anymore. They think about dropping out because they're struggling. And um, my little sister, I've been teaching her to drive and stuff like that. And she told me the other day, oh, I'll teach me how to drive. I want to um, let her drive before next year. And I told her, why? She goes, oh, because if they don't change the requirements and really many options, I'm going to drive to sign up for what? She goes, so high school. I don't want to not graduate. So, just bring her attention do you know how that sounds? Seriously, I mean, you know how that sounds? I mean, I know, I, I know what you're doing, and I know that it's, yes. I know. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right track. I never did not become mistaken, so you refused to correct it. 
I have no doubt in my mind that you, the school board, will correct this error. Thank you. For this. Hard to get there. 
and one point or another, we're strong, we're brave, because we're gonna, we're not gonna crush those dreams. We are not, because we're important. Even if we don't have the same, we don't have the same. If we're Hispanic or anything, many are supporting us, and I'm thankful for that. But what about you all? We need your help. We want to get there. We want to succeed in life. It's hard, I know. Math is hard. I know it is because it's always been there for me. Like math, math, since I was in kindergarten, I've been struggling. Many people just don't get it. And I know that because I was like that. Like Since I was in kindergarten getting help, it's hard for me. But we're working hard because we want a better life. We want to support our families. We just want to be somebody one day and for people to accept us for who we are. prepared 
for this class, and I felt that I would have been. We are not offered an English class, and I don't, a regular English class, and I don't understand why that is. Because I, I know for a fact I'm not the only student struggling in English. And I really hope that you guys understand that we're not trying to take the easy way out. And we're not trying to just get this paper to say that we have it. It really does mean something to us. And if it didn't, we would not be here tonight. And we wouldn't be here taking the time out of our days to make sure we get what we need. Graduation is important for many reasons. And I just hope you realize that this is very important to each and every single one of us. And we all have a tough time in something. And I'm sure you all can relate. And that's all. <laughs> <laughs> totally prepared for what we're giving them. And I would ask that you think before making drastic changes at the possible consequences, because now we have, if you do choose to change and incorporate other classes, we now have one quarter of the year that these kids have lost in the curriculum, whatever curriculum they would go into. And does that mean they'll be expected to complete a year within three quarters? or that means that they won't get as much in the three quarters? Will their grade, let's say they're flunking algebra, will that carry over to the next grade? There are a lot of questions that people don't know. And parents are, there are lots of rumors flying everywhere. Um, there's been no statement, no specific statement gone out to the parents or to the community as to what's happening. And I'd like to applaud Virginia for making sure that um, Spanish was included because we have in most audiences people who only speak Spanish. And I would suggest most groups have the translation available so it doesn't interfere. You don't have to double translate. You just have people, if most people speak Spanish, the English speakers wear their earphones. If most people speak English, the Spanish speakers use the earphones. It doesn't interrupt and it makes, it sends a message that you care about everyone and all parents and including them in the curriculum decisions. Um, so that's my second thing. And my third thing is I want to offer um, the Spanish is at the bottom and the English is on the top. That is not allegorical, please. Um, and um, we are having an open house at the One Step Center. And one of the reasons I retired and I'm doing the job I'm doing now is because as a principal, I saw all, so many limitations that were placed on me that I wanted to have happen. And so we have math support. Jessica, who spoke so eloquently, is the math tutor at the One Step Center. Um, we're not getting a penny from anyone from the district. We would love to have some of that one-time only money so that we then could provide some staffing to really support kids. We have a whole bank of computers. I want to thank uh, Mr. Johnson, who I worked with who um, offered to send a, a tutor from the high school, from the school district down, and to have kids work on the computer at the one step. So I would like to join with you in supporting the youth. We have that program available. I'd like to do that together, and I'd support those of you who are interested in doing that. So please, 
look at the systemic changes. It's not, the kids should not be the consequence of poor systemic preparation. Here's some invitations, and I hope you'll all come on Saturday to our one house and bring your checkbooks. <laughs> Christina, of course, my husband spoke earlier. I'm the first person to push her beyond as far as she can go. It's heartbreaking to hear your story because I've heard my daughter come to me and she was intense and nice. And she said, Mom, there's, there's not enough help. I'm struggling with this and this. I'm not a graduate. So I can't help her. But I always tell her, you know, you've got to find your resources. Find kids in your class. Find, you know, is, is there any programs out there? It's very limited. But still I push her. Still I, I put it on her. Like, you can do it. You've got to do it. Um, I take pride in how far she's come. And I'm glad that you guys are changing this for them. I get that fact that you know, it was a broken system, and you guys are trying to fix it. But it shouldn't apply to these kids right now. You guys got to start it from, you know, ninth grade. You can't just, I mean, like I said, I want the best for her. I know she needs it. I get that. But, I mean, I'd, I'd do anything to support that. But who's going to sit there and help all these kids if you pass that? Who's gonna sit there and put those extra hours for them? To give them the assistance they need. To catch them up in the system that left them behind. I, like I said, I'm a parent that would do anything. We drove Monday through Thursday to Ventura, sat there for hours to bring her, to catch her up, to give her that extra step that she needed. I don't really listen to her complain as much because I always think, you know, kids always complain. But hearing her get so upset and so passionate about this, and hearing all the kids come by the house and they're all talking about it and how it affects them, and it's heartbreaking. So that's why I'm here today, to ask that you guys, you know, commend you for setting the bar higher, but don't push it on the kids who are gonna have to break their backs to try to make it. Thank you.
so that students and parents at Fulmer High School will be present for the discussion. Two years ago when the graduation requirements changed, the discussions did not start until late in the evening when most of the parents and kids had left. A, offer more courses for 9 to 12 students, including general math and pre-algebra classes for special ed students who are not prepared yet for general education math. Offer pre-algebra to students who are not ready for al algebra. Add consumer career math. Make it a rigorous course. B, analyze the performance of the ninth grade math students, specifically those in algebra two. Has the philosophy of pushing students forward been successful? Look at the multiple measures. Look at the UCLA placement tests, the CSTs, the benchmark assessments. C, analyze the performance of all math students who have been moved forward to the next level of math with a D in Algebra 1. Again, has the philosophy of pushing students forward been successful? Look at the multiple measures. Analyze the performance of the 8th grade students who completed Algebra 1 in 7th grade. These students are considered the cream of the crop. They should be scoring advanced in math and they are not. With basic scores in Algebra 1, these students will not be prepared for advanced mathematics such as calculus. They won't make it. E, use multiple measures to determine students' placement in math courses. Three, in the fall of 2009, Thelma High School had 1,137 students enrolled and it now only has 1,010. Where did 127 students go? That is more than 10% of the school population that is like this. Four, the school board agenda, which is placed on the website, should include supporting documents. The minutes should be comprehensive. Without these pieces, the information on the website is incomplete, ambiguous, confusing, and uninformative. Five, change the night of the school board meeting so that it does not conflict with the city council meeting. Community members and the press should not have to choose between a school board meeting and a city council meeting. Six, voting in public and the appearance of impropriety. When the school board routinely has an unanimous vote on issues, it appears that they are discussing the vote in closed session which is a violation of the Brown Act. It is in the best interest of the students, staff, and community that each board member feels free to vote his or her beliefs and their conscience clearly. The position of each individual board member should be conveyed to the public. <coughs> um, the other thing I would like to address that I didn't write down is that I when I speak to students as a high school counselor, they are pushed into the most difficult courses that they can handle. And I don't make the decision on what they handle. We get the recommendations from staff members. At the term between their junior and senior year, we are now looking at, am I pushing them in the most difficult thing, or am I working towards them just getting through if they are a DNF student and constantly retaking classes? There's a philosophical question there. Would I like everybody to be in the most difficult classes possible? Have I ever told somebody that they can't do it? The answer to that is no. But I say to them, and last year is a good example, I had kids, you know what, take algebra two, I think you can do it. Uh, I don't think I can do it, Mrs. Asham. Take it. No, no, I want to be in math and devils, which was the math class we gave to seniors last year. So I had probably eight kids double enrolled. A lot of them stop the math and other second semester and continue in algebra two. That way they had the support, they knew they were gonna meet their math requirement, but I pushed them to keep going. And I think that every counselor at Fillmore High School that I have worked with has had that belief. I don't know why Ms. Amesco said what she did, but I wasn't her counselor. But I will tell you that and Jessica is a perfect example, and some of these other younger kids who I didn't work with the seniors last year, but with, the, the, with the, these kids, 
until last year, and at that time I was working predominantly, you know, we worked to get the seniors out. So that is the philosophy that we have had at Fillmore High School, is you push the kids and you push the kids and you push the kids, and then you make sure they're gonna graduate because their parents are more concerned that they walk across the stage and they get that diploma. Maybe they haven't met the algebra two requirement because they're not ready for it, but they can do that at the community college. If you take that diploma away from them, you have harmed them for life. Getting them out the door with the diploma and getting them into the community college or the Marine Corps or whatever their chosen field is, that is far better than not at passing algebra two and not graduating. Thank you. understand that we cannot respond to your comments as you make them. Board members aren't supposed to comment. Uh, <laughs> uh, not we're not supposed to comment. Our, our hands are tied. It goes back to what Ms. Ashen was talking about, the Brown Act. But I do want to emphasize, each and every one of us up here are individuals. We are not yes people. We don't bow to anyone. I don't bow to him, he does not bow to me, or any of us others here. We're all independent thinkers. We have our own philosophies. I will do everything I can to persuade him to see my point of view, or her, or her, or him. So it's, it's, I have to be very emphatic that we are not yes people. We don't say yes to the superintendent. We don't say yes to the assistant superintendent, or these other two gentlemen. In fact, we challenge them. It's our job to make them better than what they are, just like the teachers and the counselors and the principals at your schools are there to try to make you, not try, it's their job to make you a better person, academically and socially and as a citizen. That is very, very important that I want you all to understand. But we cannot comment on what has been said. The last thing I wanna say is, uh, there are, some people might say it's out of line, but I will say it anyway. There are four Mexicans on this board. We're not Puerto Rican, we are not Cuban, we are not Central American, we are not South American, we are not Spanish. Rangel, Prado, Garnica, De La Piedra. And my wife thinks I'm Mexican. And we got one, uh, <laughs> we have our one token here on the board. Honorary, <laughs> honorary. <laughs> But just, just keep that in mind. We all have Mexican roots. Both my mother and father were, they used to call themselves fruit bums. Back in the 1930s and the 1920s, they followed the crops from Santa Paula to Caste to, San, uh, to uh, Fresno, across to San Jose, and then back down to Santa Paula. They did that for over 15 years of their lives. So, and I know there's a lot of similar uh, experiences here. We, we had farm worker parents. And, and I'm proud to say, so, soy mexicano, puro mexicano. I'm an American citizen first. I had to make that clear when I first got elected to the board back in uh, 1994. Because we had issues of this sort. Back then it was Chicano studies versus Mexican American studies. And I made it clear to the audience back then and the parents back there that were pushing for Chicano studies. Look, I can't, maybe these people were not on the board by the way at that time, but I had to make it clear to them. I want Chicano studies, but if I can't have Chicano studies, we'll have Mexican American studies, but we're gonna study the same thing that we would have studied in Chicano studies. Because if I had a choice of being called Mexican, Mexican-American, Hispanic, Latino, and all those other fancy terms that they now use, my choice of identification was Chicano. And it had always been that way. But 
for political correctness and to make people happy and to smooth uh, people's feelings. I'll say I'm Latino or Hispanic just to get them to understand, because even in this day and age, people don't understand the term Chicano itself. But that's okay. That's another time, another place. We're here as individual board members, individual thinkers, and we are not yes people. And to his credit, he makes sure that we try to abide by the Brown Act as much as we can, as often as we can. Not always successful, <laughs> as, you're proving, as you are proving. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, had to, I had to make some points clear because again, the audience doesn't understand who we are. Okay. Well, with that, I think we're moving on to item J. Which, uh, yes. Ten minute break. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Okay, 
Okay, the vote is zero. Okay, so then we're to the uh, future meeting uh, segment on 7L. So guys, look, uh, the meeting, is, uh, the next meeting will be on October 15th. Okay, well, here's where I have a question because there's valid concerns that have been brought to my attention and uh, also mine. Well, that's right. what Alan said. Our if you'll look at these, these dates, and I'm going to yeah. give you those dates, Here's the problem we had when we canceled the Alliance meeting. We had shifted because it was only two weeks in between. We did this before two years ago. But we did it, there was a three week one. There was three three weeks between the third and the next one. So, but we didn't have one now. So, what we're going to do is if we go three weeks now, this is the 24th, we don't do the first. We do the 15th of October, and now we're back on schedule. So the next board meeting in November. Wait, but the 15th well, that's about but, we're but dark we on the 15th. That's a dark week. We're dark on that week, man. But I think we approved it in the overall meeting. Um, because that's, no, because that's the third week. When, when we take office and all in December, mm -hmm. and that's we, we, schedule, we, the we schedule the meetings, first and we third. schedule for the first and the third um, yes. Tuesdays Tuesday, of the month. month. Yes. Okay, so. Can we go back to that? Yeah. We're not going to go back to that. Yeah. But we will schedule the 15th. The, the first and the 15th was a regular board meeting days. Right. So the eight day. But okay. we're going to change the eight because we were back when I didn't show up, we changed the board. So we're going to go back and correct that. Okay. So the 15th will be the second Wednesday, Tuesday of the month, right? So it's first and second. First it's actually first the third. The first is the first. So first, first Tuesday, Tuesday and the third Tuesday. And so the first Tuesday in October is the first. Yes, yeah. so, so but that's one week. We're not going to get a January. Right, and then we have the eighth and So we're, quote, we're not going to be in the 15th, but that's actually three weeks now. Oh, we're changing the eighth to the 15th. Right. And it'll be one, two, the third, and we'll be back on November. Uh, I'm not going to November the 15th is our break. I'm it's gone, so if, you, I mean, if you're changing the dates, you gotta make sure you're not where? Where? I'm, I'm on vacation now. Where? 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 The 15th, 15th, the week, 15th, the week of the 14th. Okay, then you want to keep one more time. Yeah. People, one more time. Yeah. Okay, so yes. we're going to, on for the 8th. On for the 8th. On for the 8th. Okay, that's the next one. That's the next one. Okay, we're on for the 8th. I got somebody wanted to work somewhere, and I can't tell them. Okay, so let me let me see if I can restate it out. Okay, so originally, we're all in agreement that the first and the third Tuesday right, are normal. Right. We're going to go back normal. on them. Yes. But for October, because you don't know, a week is not enough time to, yeah. to do it, right. you're suggesting that the board adopt it for the 8th. Right. And then because the 15th would be again a week later and we're dark, you're suggesting that we go over 22nd. Yes. Yeah. That was the reason how we. Okay. That's why we right. set it up that way. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's what I have on the okay. agenda. Okay. okay. That's right. Better work. The only thing is I thought maybe they wanted to be here. And then yeah, I'm not, I'm gonna you be won't be here. Okay, so that's okay. You already said that, so okay. there'll be an order, right, Scott? Yeah. Okay, so we're to the 8th and the 22nd, then we're back to the 5th and the 19th of November. Correct. Okay, okay. then we'll write that on okay. Yeah. So okay. the first meeting, that our next meeting will be on the 8th. 8th, okay. October 8th. And then after that, we're October 8th, 22nd. October 22nd, November 5th, November, November 19th. 19th. Okay, yeah. Those are the dates. Okay. okay. <laughs> No. All right. Any other that? comments? Any concerns? Whether the air is okay? Yeah. Just, are we in there? No. Are you okay? We're ready for him. Yeah. yeah we're ready. Oh, okay. okay. We're going to get there. Okay. Good. Okay. Well, we're very settled really settled. Then we'll move on to item M. Board closing comments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And again, the building. So then you will give you an opportunity to. You got nothing? Okay. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. And Tony. No, I was just going to comment that um, it, I don't know if any of you have ever watched <laughs> the uh, Cornejo board meetings, but the, the, I, I watched a couple for a few minutes. They're very interesting because when they uh, when they when they make a motion, they say, uh, "Mr. President, uh, like number twelve, I approve resolution number third, blah 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 blah." And they repeat it again? Yeah. They repeat it again. I like our method much more. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping to see it. But it's it's parliamentary it's, it's, procedure. It's, it is parliamentary yes. procedure. It's it's a lot the other, the other thing is, uh, Formal, yeah. they were explaining on, a, on an overhead the, uh, the monies that we're going to be getting, uh, supposedly, in the future. And there was an interesting comment made because they said, oh, well, 
schools like Fillmore and Santa Paula are going to get something in the $12,000 range per student. And us over here at Conejo and Oak Park are only going to get five or $6,000 per student. And that, well, it, what, what I'm getting at is the way they presented it. And the I'm trying to have one. <laughs> I'll give you $256,000. Yeah. They, they, they had it set up really good. It was really easy to understand. So. Again, so you if, 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 you want, if you ever want, if you want, I don't know. I'm just saying, if you ever want some interesting information as to what goes on with the state and uh, whatever, their their board meetings are very enlightening. You know what the best thing is? Where? Those are really oh. long. I I I I want to watch it. Yeah, oh, wow. I had it too. <laughs> no, they they come up. They got so much staff that they can go. Oh, yeah. Analysis. Anyway, okay. No, um, I noticed on our website that the um, back to school night for um, <coughs> elementary schools, it just has Mountain Vista MP on there, and there's yeah. nothing that says no, on there. Michael sent us an email. They're no, they're they're oh, I know they are, She's but I'm website. talking about the oh, community. Or whatever, if they check our website, it just has MV for Mount Vista. It doesn't say that all elementary schools have their back to school night. So, where let's go? We got to get a new one. We need to put a new website. We got to set up that our website. It's not good. Because some some people are checking that. Yeah, but more and more. It's good. I mean, we get in there. We get in there. So that's going to take And so the elementary ones are this Thursday, correct? And um, I already requested a parking space. Victor already <laughs> promised me a parking space if I go. So, do you hear that, principals out there? Victor already, already. Just, you see offered to have you a parking space. You can block my junkie truck in. If you see it, just park right behind it. All right, I'll block it. Safe spot. <laughs> okay. Safe spot. It's where you live. Yes. One question. I know we were, I think we had a comment, um, Alan, you put out in, in the Friday uh, update about the, uh, the water situation, the reclaimed water at the yes. school. Yes. Um, one of you, I, I had a comment about the state of the grass out there, that apparently it's in really, really horrible condition. So hopefully, that will be addressed as well in 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 that report. Is that not? Yeah, we we will. We're, we're going to talk about. You know, it's, it's going to be a, an issue. It's a long, how many three years now? Oh no, it's been, no, it's yeah, been for a long it's time. been forever. Yeah, I mean the, the design was bad from the beginning. Yeah. Of the year, so it's been what? And it's been yeah, five, five years. Five years. Yeah. It was about the second year that Jeff was here. I think. Yeah. Okay. Well, it definitely doesn't work. We told him that. Mm -hmm. So. The last comment. Yeah. I just want to thank Michael for that excellent presentation. I really thought it was well, compassionate. No, impassionate. Well, yeah, and compassionate. But also at the same time, very direct. That's what I like. Letting them know. I, like, I, I know they felt it out there. And to a degree, some of them didn't like it. That's the reality. I thought you did a good job too, and I made you think too about what your services must be like. But it's good. Okay, are you we're done telling you? At least you said you had nothing. Okay, I, I did uh, meet with the Ag Advisory Council, and there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, of course, you know how well the uh, Ag program did with the uh, with the fair, but there, there's a grant coming in, but there's some kind of things getting in the way for now that are going to provide money for a lot of things. But one of the things I wanted to bring up is that they're thinking about putting some classrooms out there. But the big thing is the, uh, is the I don't know what you would call it, I guess, natural habitat. Yes, restoration. You know, restoration natural habitat that they're working on out there. And uh, I think that would really be cool and it would look really nice too. And, and uh, maybe one of these days, you might be able to share something about what's going to happen out at the farm because there's a lot of ideas being generated but I don't want to jump on a horse or let the horse go without jumping on sure. it or being able to get on it yet. So anyway, I'll kind of reserve that for a, a later time. But uh, 
anyway, there's some other ideas too, but it went real well. And then Joe shared some things about what his kids are going to be doing in the, in the near future. And uh, anyway, things went really well. Not a lot to report now, but things are moving. And just to piggyback on that, I thank you, Ellen, because I know you brought all that group together. Yeah. Because I attended that meeting prior to this and to bring them together to do that habitat. I have a lot of people working for me. Bob and yeah. Michael Gwynn and Cynthia and Laura Torres. Yeah. Yeah. We had a lot of good people there. So mm -hmm. and, and Bobby, Rod is actually there. Yeah, but I have one other announcement. This is an important one. Today, I got to meet the board member from Ventura who came to check on our application for the Golden Bell Award, CSBA's highest award. He came out. You want to say a few words, Cynthia? How, how, how was he? How was he? Pretty impressed? He, yes, Mr. Walker came out and actually he toured our facility. And I gave him a tour of our environmental science class, which is the habitat. And he was able to see our students in action, our students studying, um, what was the topic for today? They were studying bugs, but there's a technical term for it. And, <laughs> and more. And so they were looking at the species as well. And so he had an opportunity to uh, have a discussion with the students. And then he spoke with um, Mr. Subi. He also spoke with Michael Johnson. He spoke with Michael Glenn. And then I even had Deputy Vasquez out there because we needed him to see that this has also increased attendance and it's brought down tagging and violence. And he was extremely impressed. And then from there, we took off to the uh, school farm and then discussed what you were talking about, Mr. Wild, and how this project has now grown to three different sites. We discussed the habitats at both Piru and San Cayetano, and the fact that our students are serving as mentors, not only for the students, uh, but creating leadership roles for our students. So we will achieve when you raise the bar and when you do provide opportunities for students to learn through project-based learning mm -hmm. because there's so much support and so i was very very happy to have him come by and john he sent his regards and then he stopped by to uh, dr machino's office and was very very happy that we have <coughs> district level support which is important in, in making sure that this program continues and it's, it's a sustainable program not just a one and done but i'll let you finish the conversation dr well, no, I was just, he was really impressed and had nothing but high regard for not only what we're doing, but for John Clarita. He said, my buddy John So, and, and um, I think that it's something that we should truly be proud of. And the amount of work people think this stuff like this doesn't happen. It's not that easy. And you have to have a teacher like Laura Torres who's going to step up, become Ventura County teacher of the year with some of I think we're going to get the Golden Globe, the Golden Globe. Golden Bell Award, which will be a first to show more, and I think it's good that we did it on the map. And uh, so I, I thank you very much for all your hard work, and thank your staff as well, because it takes everybody in that community to do the things that we do. So thank you, staff, as well. Okay, and Bob, this is, this is Bob's spirit. He hates when I do this. I hate him so much, he gets red every time I say something. I know, and, and so I just want people to understand that what Bob does, and even Mr. Walker said this, he goes above and beyond his role. It's not just let me move the pile of dirt. It's let's talk about how our students can learn and how can we create a project from this idea. And it's something that has evolved into our program. We have students that are interning now with the United States Department of Fish and Wildlife. They're thinking about careers in teaching, careers in the science field. And that's what we need to keep doing is, is creating opportunities for our students. So sorry, Bob, I had to do it again. Yeah, Bob, Bob, I think our STEM project. Bob gets really excited yeah. that we're going to have classes here. We could have teachers from UCSD, CSU, Channel Islands, and now Cal Lutheran is in the contact with us. And we could hopefully get a STEM project out there. It's you know, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, because <coughs> we work with each other and other topics. So I'm really, really, uh, we may have to expand it. It may not just be Sierra High School, it may end up being an expanded version for the high school also be involved in it. Uh, Laura Tudis is working closely with, um, I forget the name of the science teacher, but Phil Morton. Laurie Merrill. Oh, at the high school, at the high school. I thought she meant it. Because Laurie mentioned that she's working with Laura. She's Laura. working with her. Laura has outreach to every teacher in, in each school site. And each school site um, has sent a teacher who is now being trained. And so each quarter, we will have more teachers coming on board. And then it's, it's so that it's sustainable. And it's not just our program at Sierra High School. It's providing opportunities for the younger ones. And it's actually a longitudinal study of of uh, the environment. So these third graders from your schools I think are, I had, we had 
five or six teachers from Sakai Oh yeah, to the we did. And actually, John Wilbur also had teachers from yeah. SI. <laughs> so um, it's a long-term study, so that these students can then continue to go back to the river yes. area and, and, and research what had their plant done, where are the species still there, what does the environment look like, and they're mapping it out. So it's not just that one-year project, it's over K-12. Sakai Thano's um, grant just got, um, Bob was just telling me today, and what were you saying, Bob, that it was, uh, they got fully funded? Fully funded, that's yeah. what I was told this afternoon. Yeah. 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 By the state? Uh, by the Fed Fish and Wildlife Fish. Thing. Yeah. yeah. So we don't know about the, the grant yet, the $116,000. No, we find out in January. That's a big one. That's the strategic plan on how we can avert a 100 year and a 500 year flood and what we can do with that farm, 80 acres. So, of course, a lot of people on the farm, they don't trust those guys anyway. They don't trust the government. And the government comes in and says, you know, we're the government, trust us. Okay, so we're here to help. So, uh, yeah, so. Well, we'll see. I think if we need a strategic plan to alleviate any more opportunity for the flood to wipe out our stuff, that is by itself, which is a major feat for us. So, I'm really excited about uh, Cynthia taking over. She is in Bobby. They have really, Bobby has taken on. How many jobs has she taken on? Is she migrant? None. No, she's the LD. She's the LD. ELD yeah. and the farm. And the farm. On top of teaching for the horticulture classes. So and she's happy. She's she, is she? Okay, yeah, she is. Okay. Speaking of floods, um, I was asked at the last board meeting by the board to bring back some information about uh, the evacuation emergency procedures and I missed my chance, so if you don't mind I can go over it real briefly now. Um, Mark, can I ask a question before it slips my brain because it's getting really small as I get older? I was out, I was out visiting uh, Tyru Elementary today before I you know, found, uh, or actually she found me. Uh, Diane, I was talking to Raymond Barrera and I was, I was thinking about, okay, the kids are going to hike up the, the hill. Where are they going to hike up the hill? I, I, There's a the northwest uh, corner of the property by the, the farm. Yeah, I was asking gate. where that road went, but he didn't know whether there was access to the fence that was up there. Yeah, there's a gate, there's a double gate up there in the corner. All right. But they can get through. All right, I'm Okay, Diana's got the key. Okay. Was that? Just making sure Diana's got the key. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I confirmed with uh, the fire department and um, Captain McGrath today that depending on what the emergency is and where it's coming from, uh, an example would be if there's a, a dam break and it's flooding. Well, first it's going to wash away the 126, so you're not going to have to worry about traffic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and nobody's going to be driving into it, so there's not going to be, you know, but they'll start on the east end of town and work their way and make sure everybody's safe. And But their first priority would be uh, Mountain Vista, or Real Vista, and get them over to San Cayetano. Uh, if it's on the west end, well, let's say a hazardous spill of some sort and the west wind's blowing this way, they'll start at that end and work their way this way. And so it depends on what the emergency is, but they won't let the kids then for stay the down. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it won't be all kids for themselves. <laughs> It'll be all the teachers for themselves. <laughs> so anyway, I just, all right. okay. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Alright, no other comments. Um, entertain a motion in the Yeah, close session. What's that? Close, no close yeah. session. I think so. I have to. Okay, so close. Okay, so I, I move we don't uh, adjourn the regular meeting and go into close session. Okay, there's a second. Okay, anyone there? Aye. Aye. Okay. Four, yeah. Yeah.